Yo, why is he looking at me like that? What's up, little bud? You got a staring problem, pal? Jesus. Look at his face. Dumb little face. Yo, Zan, get your boy, dog. M23 versus F8 Gaming. This could be a very fun donk fight if this guy chooses to donk fight. Mother Oh, he's so handsome. Look at him. Just look at him. Oh, wow. Would you look at this? He's got the little uh, the bells oh, and yeah. whistles, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How to AM9C. Step one. Enemy spotted. Step two. Pew. Step three. Step four. Profit. <laughs> literally, literally nothing he can do. Poor bozo. Hey everyone, Wolvis here, age 5. I considered not making a video about the F8E because, quite frankly, this jet already has been reviewed by a lot of people on YouTube in the past. But I decided, you know what, I've already talked about other aircraft like the MiG-21MF and the F-104G, why don't I talk about the F-8E Crusader? Because just like those other two planes, the F-8E is very good at slaying premium bozos. To get you up to speed, the F-8E Crusader is a rank 7 vehicle that sits in the US tech tree. It has a battle rating of 10.3, and that means you are mostly going to be fighting premium aircraft. Fun? Um, depends on what you like in terms of fun, but certainly not a problem in the F-8E because the F-8E is a very, very capable fighter at 10.3. Why? Well, not only does it get a set of decent guns, it also gets a set of very decent missiles. And it doesn't just get a set of them, it gets two sets, so four missiles in total, which is quite nice for an aircraft at 10.3. Pair that with a good set of flares as well as very good flight performance and you've got yourself a monstrous little plane. Except it's not actually all that little at all. And in fact, this thing is a chonky chonky boy. Although the F-8 does have a rather powerful engine, the problem is that this aircraft also just weighs quite a bit, and as a result, your thrust to weight ratio is rather low. What does that translate to in practice? Well, the F-80 has a relatively poor acceleration and also has relatively poor top speed. This is not a fast aircraft, at least not compared to something like the MiG-21 SMT. However, unlike the MiG-21 SMT, this aircraft does actually hold on to its energy. In fact, that's probably the main thing that makes this airframe good. The F-80 is very, very good at holding on to its energy. Pair that with very good turn rate and you've got yourself an absolutely beautiful donk fighter. Yes, this plane is good because it gets good missiles. Yes, this plane is good because it gets good guns. But the main thing that makes this aircraft fun to fly is the turn radius and the energy retention. Now that does create one problem. Although this aircraft is very fun and 10.3, it does perform a little bit lackluster in an up tier, especially if you get up tier to 11.3, where missiles are just very important, the AM9Ds and the AM9Cs are just not that competitive, and the fact that you are then also fairly slow means that you kind of are on the back foot compared to something like the Mirage 2000. It's absolutely not impossible to win an 11.3 engagement, but you are going to struggle a bit more in an up tier than you would be in, for example, something like the MiG-21MF. Not that it's very fun to be up tiered in the MiG-21MF either, just to be clear. If you find yourself in a down tier though, you are absolutely unstoppable. Unless you rip your wings off, in which case, ha <laughs> el bozo. Yeah, it's actually not a fun game mechanic at all. I don't know why you can rip wings randomly in the F-80. It, it, just keep it in mind. If you're not careful while you're running boosters, you might go, uh-oh, goodbye wing, and die. So, yeah. In any case, that's my very short review of the F-80E. But of course, that very short review is still rather vague, and it does not conclude everything about the F-80 that I'd like to say. So instead of talking about the F-80 for a while without really showing you some footage, I think it's better that I explain how to play this jet, or at least how I play this jet, whilst showing some gameplay. Now you can see that I've started this game by just climbing, and the reason I'm climbing in the F-80 is, well, this aircraft does benefit from a bit of an altitude advantage, but more importantly, I want to make use of the AM-9C. In case you don't know, the AM-9C is basically just a radar-guided version of the AM-9G. What does that mean? That means that I get to use effectively an all-aspect missile as long as I can get a solid radar lock on the enemy. So why am I climbing then? 
Well, because at higher altitudes, this radar is a lot more effective than it is at low altitudes. It's a fairly basic radar. It doesn't get pulse Doppler or anything. And as a result, you really need to rely on there just not being any background clutter, which is, of course, not the case this high up in the sky. Now, you'll see that I've locked the first enemy in front of me. He's about 10 kilometers away. I'll wait for him to get within about 6 kilometers, and then I will fire my AM-9C. Also, beautiful Mach Cloud, by the way. Thank you, Gaijin. It's a little bit annoying in aircraft like this that are basically just stuck at Mach 1, especially in the climb. In any case, this MiG-19 dies to my first AM-9C. Why? Well, he doesn't even get an RWR. He probably didn't see that missile coming at all. Same is true for this Jack-38, except he does notice the missile. Only problem being is that he notices the missile way too late. He pulls down a little bit to avoid it, but nowhere near enough to avoid that 18 Gs of pull. As a result, he gets crit and he will become a kill in just a bit. Now, as I'm looking around trying to find the next enemy, I notice that there's two ground attackers right behind me. I'm honestly a little bit confused as to why these guys climbed all the way up to 7 kilometers of altitude, but hey, here we are. I get to enjoy some R60 dodging. So I dodge the first missile from the SU-25 and I notice that he starts to turn around. And I decide, you know what, why not turn after him? I see that my teammates are coming in, I might as well start engaging these two enemies right away. My main hope was just that the SU-25 wouldn't notice me, because while well, he's focused on my teammates, and that would give me a clean shot with my AM-9D. And as it turns out, that was indeed a good strategy, because that SU-25K does absolutely no effort of flaring my missile. Now, speaking of the AM-9D, I guess this is a good time to quickly talk about that missile. The AM-9D is effectively just a caged version of the AM-9G. So, effectively, it's just an AM-9B on steroids. And what I mean by that is that the missile performance is actually fairly good. It has 18 Gs of overload, it's fairly fast, it has a long burn time but it's annoying to use in terms of trying to get a lock on the enemy. You can easily get a lock on the enemy, the only problem is that the enemy has to be right in front of your aircraft, and they have to stay right in front of your aircraft. That means that you can't use the nose of your aircraft to lead the missile onto where it has to go. Is that terrible? No. Is it great? Not really. Is it okay? Absolutely. It's a totally fine missile for this type of plane. In any case, as you can see, I'm dogfighting the A4 now. I overshoot massively because, of course, the A4 is a lot slower than I am. And whilst I'm looking behind me, I notice that there is a MiG-19 who's trying to catch up to me. So as a result, I decide, you know what, maybe let's just extend from this A4 for a bit and wait for one of our teammates to come in. In just a second, you're about to see an F4C absolutely screaming past that MiG-19, but that's not the guy I'm waiting for. There is another F3H that is slowly closing into my location, and I'm waiting for him to start helping me out. I'm honestly not that afraid of a MiG-19 or the A4 individually, but fighting them both at the same time is going to be a bit annoying. Go on with the MiG-19, pull off fairly late, but I miss all my shots because I am a little bozo. And anyway, I start to turn fight this MiG-19, because I notice the A4 is quite far away, and I can most certainly outperform a MiG-19 in a dogfight. The A3H is also trying to help me out, and because the F3H is here, this MiG-19 turns back around, I get an AM-9D off, and of course the MiG-19 doesn't really have a chance against a rear aspect 18G missile. There you go, we're now 4 kills in, and now we get to dogfight with this A4. Again, A4, fairly easy aircraft to take out in the F8, but I do have to make sure that I play my cards effectively. If I just start trying to turn with him in a horizontal plane, that might not be the best idea, so I, instead I went upwards so that I can use my energy advantage and my engine power advantage, and then the A4 does the opposite. He kind of dumps all his speed and becomes extremely slow right on the deck. And that basically makes him a very easy target for the F3H, and he is now going to put some shots into that A4. In any case, I put myself right behind the A4, so just in case that the F3 has missed and hasn't taken out the A4, I can take the kill. But I also don't want to kill Steel, so I see that the A4 is crashing, and I let him crash right there. Could have been an ace game, but honestly, I don't want to kill Steel just to get that fifth kill. So yeah, that was the first match. Now let's take a look at another match. And more specifically, let's take a look at a clip where I actually end up 1v1 dogfighting someone. Because remember, the F-80E is still very much a gunfighter. Yes, I know I just showed you a clip where I got 4 missile kills, but don't be fooled by that. You're still going to be getting plenty of kills with the guns of this jet. 
After I shot that F4F right there, I look up and I notice that there is a MiG-21 SPSK diving down on me. We go head on, I end up missing all my shots, and the enemy does as well. And here is where the fun begins. The F8E and the SPSK are perhaps polar opposites of one another. I have very good energy retention, but not good thrust to weight ratio, and he has the exact opposite. And, you know, that means if you're in a MiG-21, make sure you don't get energy trapped. But for some reason, this guy in front of me decides to do the opposite and decides to turn very aggressively right in front of my guns. Easy kill? Uh, yeah, not so much. Clearly skill issue, right? I'm uh, bad at the game. I didn't hit any of my shots there, but I really should have. Uh, but realistically, it's also just a part of the F-8E right there. You're going to have a lot of moments when you're flying this jet when you think you should be able to shoot the enemy and you're just not going to be able to. And that's because the rudder on this jet is quite annoying. The guns themselves are fine, they're very easy to aim, the plane itself is not. In any case, I now find myself in front of the MiG-21. Is that a bad thing? Not necessarily, because I am much faster than him and I can basically try to bait him into another sharp turn. Why am I trying to make him turn? Well, because I want to energy trap this guy even more than I already have. So what I'm doing is I'm staying well ahead of him, making sure that he doesn't get his guns on, and I'm trying to make him pull up after me. And he does, and despite his massive thrust to weight ratio, his energy is just being bled extremely quickly due to his delta wings, and all I really have to do is swing my nose around and blast a couple of shots into his airframe. That is, of course, if I don't actually miss this time, which, you know, with my aiming, you never... Oh, no, I definitely got a crit there. And crits are something you're going to be getting a lot with these guns. These guns, like I said, they're fairly easy to aim because they've got good muzzle velocity, but they are also kind of weak in the sense that they don't do that much damage. Regardless, I turned this guy into a Minecraft torch, so, um, rip bozo. Well, actually, no, not really. Thank you, Ruben, for the dogfight. That was a, a fun 1v1. In any case, I'm sorry if this video comes across as a little bit rushed. It is. I'm currently in the middle of my exam weeks. So I'm trying not to fail uni right now. Uh, so I am, I'm certainly a little stressed. Yeah, in any case, join the Discord server. The links are now no longer broken. I, I messed that up last time. I'm sorry. And uh, goodbye. Goodbye.